been learning a lot about the Mormon mommy bloggers or the malevolent Mormon mommy, mommy bloggers, as we've been uh, calling them here, Jody Hildebrandt uh, and uh, Ruby Frankie. Uh, but we haven't, I mean, we, a lot's been focused on Ruby. She's the one who I think all the attention kind of went to, but uh, Jody's just as twisted, if not possibly even more, I think. We're going to take a look at uh, her life coaching. Uh, she was actually a licensed, uh, you know, counselor, uh, someone who could supposedly help people for many years. The Mormon That's church recommended her. She was on their list of recommended therapists, counselors. I don't know if it was a therapist or a counselor that she was recommended as, but she was recommended, I believe up until 2012, when the uh, church said, we're gonna have to take you off that list because there's been some uh, some issues here of her sharing uh, HIPAA information of a patient with the church that was private, and they're like, yeah, we can't do that. Um, she even had her license uh, slightly revoked for a period of time, but she got it back. Church could not officially, in an official capacity, recommended her, recommend her, but I sounds like there was a lot of insiders that still said, go, go, go to Jody, my flock. Because she <laughs> she seems to really know what she's talking about. Uh, Utah has been thrown into the whirlwind of controversy following the arrest of YouTube vlogger Ruby Frankie's business partner Jody Hildebrand on child abuse charges. Alongside Frankie, Hildebrand was involved in counseling Mormon couples and families through her life coaching service, Connections. However, former patients are now shedding light on the practices that they believe were more akin to a cult than genuine counseling. So let's learn about this, shall we? Hildebrandt's program, described by seven former patients who accused her, uh, or rather accessed her services between 08 and 19, methodically isolated themselves from their loved ones, used truth, quote unquote, and deception to manipulate perceptions and even reportedly shattered marriages. She wanted everything to stay in the group, one said, saying, quote, you're not allowed to have a different option than her, commented Stephanie Jones, a former patient. The revelations came amidst a shocking incident where Frankie's malnourished 10-year-old daughter and injured 12-year-old son were found in Hildebrandt's residence, leading to both women facing six counts of felony child abuse. It's essential to underline that these charges are unrelated to the allegations emerging about the Connections program. Connections, which Hildebrandt established in 07, provided courses on relationships and parenting rooted in the principles of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. A primary theme of the program is the dichotomy of truth and deception, when individuals allowed their personal wants, needs, and experiences to overshadow these truths. They were living in distortion, according to uh, Jody, according to the Connections course material that was reviewed by NBC News. Although Frankie has prominently have been featured alongside Hildebrandt in the service videos. None of her former clients who came forward claim to have been counseled by her. The depths of Hildebrandt's misgivings do run deep, particularly with her focus on porn and sex addiction, especially for men. It's significant to note that porn addiction isn't recognized as a legitimate disorder by the DSM-5 either. Yet it appears Hildebrandt, formerly specializing in porn addiction therapy, had no qualms diagnosing men without evidence or abnormal behaviors. It's kind of oh like my God. men came there. You have a porn addiction. It, 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 wow. It, it, uh, I'll save my comments till we're done. Spencer Tibbetts story illustrates the profound disconnect in Hildebrandt's methods. Uh, at just 16, Tibbetts, who had clandestinely obtained a phone for video games, was thrust into a men's group primarily focusing on porn addiction. Despite his lack of understanding about porn, he was exposed to disturbing conversations involving the sexual fantasies of fellow group members, including a group member who talked about his incest fantasies. This is oh, all. Oh, God. This is all the people that uh, Jody Hildebrandt's putting together in one circle and saying, let's talk. Let's figure this out. But the 16 year old in there who, who uh, was basically sentenced, I'm guessed, to her. Uh, by the parents uh, for having a phone that he shouldn't have had. Now, I guess uh, Jody said, yeah, let's put you in the porn group. In a past uh -huh. transgression, Hildebrandt faced disciplinary action by Utah officials in 2012 for breaching confidentiality with one of her patients, who later turned out to be Adam Paul Steed. Following this, 
He had his church privileges uh, revoked, got temporarily suspended from Brigham Young University, and underwent a divorce. All consequences of Hildebrandt's disclosures and allegations. Yeah. Reflecting on the devastation, Steed lamented, my family got destroyed. My life got destroyed. Yeah. How, how did he not sue her at some point? Or maybe, I don't know, maybe it's a, there's probably some stuff protecting that. Uh, for women like Stephanie Jones and Eliza Tibbetts, Hildebrand's diagnosis of control addiction, which is another one that, by the way, is not in the DSM-5, uh, steam, hmm. uh, uh, <laughs> seemed not only unprofessional, but also mentally and emotionally detrimental. Both recounted feeling trapped, controlled, and constantly berated if they ever defied Hildebrandt's views. Hildebrandt very much being like a cult leader here. Hildebrandt's professional yeah. standing took a major hit recently, obviously with all this. The uh, Utah Division of Professional Licensing disclosed last week that she voluntarily surrendered her mental health counseling license. Shouldn't have that been taken away like when they had kids being picked up at the house? Shouldn't like this, the the group said, nah. Um, no more there, there is a, a requirement to report any child abuse if you are a counselor. So mm -hmm. I'm wondering how she skirted around this. What if you're the counselor uh, that's performing the Doing abuse? Doing it? Yeah, I think that they're probably not apt to, re probably required to, but probably would not, I would think, if you're the one that's performing the but abuse. I I would think if you're in the system in any way, and, and I, I you can't see me right now, mm -hmm. but saying in the system in quotes um that they might be able to figure out that you've got a license to counsel and go oh eh, let's let's yank that yeah well thankfully it looks like her counseling career is probably done uh after all this but who knows crazier things have happened people have come out of really weird situations years later and start up uh new cults and such happens all the time uh so i don't know um, cause I, I mean, I, and nobody's died here, uh, which we have to remember. There's definitely looking like a lot of abuse by these allegations, but at the end of the day, I don't know how long these two are going to get. I don't think it's, it's not going to be a crazy long, horrible time. I don't think unless some other really deep, dark shit, uh, comes up, but I, I just don't see this being any more than like a 10 to 20 year sentence for either of them. Well, and you know, the thing is we've got, we've got child abuse here and I, I just, I wonder at what point do we say enough is enough? No, nobody was killed, but we don't know that it couldn't have led to that. No, you know, these kids were malnourished and, and I being, agree. I agree. But know. we've seen far worse people, um, that, uh, are blatantly doing these things out in the open, get far less time. Yeah. And that's true. Now, I'm trying to figure out where I, I kind of lost my train of thought, but the, this is just such a disgusting case. And, and the fact that they were thriving on social media and thriving in on the Internet, how many people were taking their lessons and applying them to their own lives? And are there other cases out there just waiting to be discovered that were inspired by these two? Does that make sense? Oh, yeah. We're basically, she's teaching this way of living, and this is how you should parent. So how many followed the way of parenting here? Yeah. And now in their own uh, world of their home and behind closed doors are also following the methods and practices taught by uh, Jody and Frankie with their own children. Yeah, and a lot of a lot of what I'm noticing with social media YouTube, TikTok, there's a lot of people who will watch these videos. And if they're done really professionally, people fucking believe it. I've got somebody that I I absolutely adore and they're watching a lot of TikTok videos and getting medical advice from them. And I'm just shaking my head like, be careful. And these people are not experts. There's just somebody sitting in their kitchen you know, just going off on things that they claim they researched. Who mm -hmm. knows what the research and, and source sources are, but looking at a just yeah, looking at a TikTok video information. It is not research uh, because you saw it on TikTok. That doesn't mean you researched it. You have to then research what happens. Where did they get these thoughts? Where did they get yeah. these ideas? That's not the end all be all. Unfortunately, we have more access to information than any point in history. 
and we fail to actually use that information for knowledge and for furthering ourselves. I mean, it, it, this what it actually really reminds me of in like a very micro sort of way is the IBLP. That's the Independent Fundamentalist Baptist. That's what the Duggars uh, are a part of. Oh, where sure. where it was very much described as if you watch the documentary Shiny Happy People on Amazon, it explains it quite well. Uh, where the IBLP isn't even technically a church, it's a group. Uh, and But they have these principles that they teach, and they basically make each and every home its own micro cult. Uh, yeah. you know, and the leaders in this one, in, in you know, the Duggars were uh, Jim Bob and Jill, Jim Bob being like the highest and end all be all. Um, and, and that's how they, so they have like anybody who follows it, that's each, their homes are like that. Um, it seems kind of like what Jody was trying to do with her beliefs and what she thought of here's, uh, here's how you have to handle this. And otherwise you're violating your truths or whatever bullshit she was spewing. Uh, but yeah, it does make you wonder how many are out there that, uh, and then how many have, have, have had the realization to say, uh, maybe we shouldn't be following this shit. Or are they looking at her as like a persecuted woman who, you know, her beliefs are being questioned and, um, I don't know who knows, but it's, it's pretty hard to argue when you have an emaciated child running out of your front door, uh, with duct tape around him that anything you're doing is good or yeah. right. So, yeah, that's, that's, that's where it- you know, it's one thing if if these people were expounding some things about children and how to to parent and and these kids were thriving and doing well and and there were witnesses to that that they were thriving and doing well and the kids seem happy, but it's a completely opposite story. And I'm just so worried about the damage that they've done to our society. Who else out there? is living and abiding by what they exposed. It's just, it's terrifying. She's just, I mean, she made a, I mean, I'm sure she's made an impact with a handful of people that she's reached, but what's far scarier is those larger organizations that do this sort of thing. Uh, but they all start somewhere. And unless we find them early on and call them out and if they get caught, uh, because had they not had an emaciated child running around, uh, I don't think they would be caught. They'd keep doing what they got. Uh, but when we catch them and we make a stink about them and they get charged, maybe it slows down the progression of others thinking, hmm, maybe I'm going to do that. I don't know. But there's a lot of them in plain sight right now that we do not go after and we choose to pretend don't exist or they have protections uh, against them, which they really shouldn't have. You know, all in the name of the freedom of religion. You're locked into the Hidden Killers podcast. Want more? Start binging on all of our true crime podcasts right now through Apple Podcasts and get an ad-free experience when you sign up to be a True Crime Today Premium Plus member exclusively on Apple Podcasts. More of the Hidden Killers podcast dropping soon. Press subscribe now.